So this mannequin, if you ever create any animations or anything for the Unreal Store, you should use this base mannequin. And um, what's good about it is if you buy animations, mocap and stuff like that, it, they'll also come onto this uh, skeleton. So okay. you can buy motion capture or you can create your own motion capture. And then as long as you use this mannequin, it'll basically transfer over to any other character. So in our art tools course, um, we use this character as the base um, skeleton rig. So then if we ever create new meshes and we basically keep the joints relatively in the same space, all the animations will transfer over. So that's kind of um, also nice because uh, I think Paragon, uh, Unreal like gave all these Paragon assets for free and they nice. use the mannequin. And so if you go to the um, Unreal store and you download those free Paragon assets, you can mm -hmm. just import or you can that you can bring in the project to unreal and then you can export from unreal these animations and then you can bring them into maya um and then you can edit the animations here so you can kind of get like free motion capture out there um, for this mannequin rig from unreal so nice. it's pretty powerful um you know and then if you do a custom mesh or you modify anything that's what our course covers how to basically kind of rig a custom character, um, you can basically use this mannequin base character and then all your animations will come over. And if someone else builds a character, they can use your animations. So it's okay, pretty, cool. Yeah. So the way I'm, I already kind of have a, um, an, an idol that we can use. So if um, yeah. in this, in this um, GUI here, there's an import motion button over here. So if mm -hmm. you click that, it's gonna ask you for your animation. Um, mm -hmm. so like I was saying, if you download the Paragon assets, or if you download some of the packs from unreal, um, you can export those animations out of unreal. I'll show you that later, um, on how you can export those. It's real simple. It'll just basically create an export animation out of unreal, and then it'll create an FBX file. And then mm -hmm. you can bring that FBX file right into the, the character here. Um, okay. so I have one already, um, that we can take a look at. Um, so this is just an idle, um, that was exported out that's motion capture. Um, so when you import it in, it's gonna ask you if you wanna do an FK or an IK. I usually oh, do, wow. yeah, I usually do both because sometimes, um, I think when you when you get these assets from Unreal, they use all IK, there's an IK spine instead of an FK. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I just usually click both. Um, and because yeah. there's also some, the, the fingers are FK. So oh, I wow. usually just click both. And so when you bring that in and to make sure you're at 30 FPS, all these animations are 30 FPS based. Okay. Um, it'll just take a second and it's going to basically bring in all of that motion uh, to this character um, okay. right here. Very cool. Yeah. So now the animation is on the character. So you can see he's got like a base idol on here. Mm -hmm. And if you click this red button up here and you select all controls, you you can see all the keyframes. So you know it's motion capture because it's all baked down. Yeah, it's all baked on once. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's another button on here, which is the spaces. Um, okay. I cover this a little bit in the course that we have there's a lot of space switching that you can do on this character. So if you, you, if you click on his um, hand, if you right click on it, you have all these um, IK space um, switching on here. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So by default, um, the default mannequin, it's all going to be on default. But if you were to change it to like um, body or world, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with IK, but if you have on world, basically what would happen is that handle stay basically in place, which is kind yeah, of what the default there. is. Yeah. And then if you want local space, um, I kind of cover it in some of my lectures. I like to work in the local space. Basically, if you switch it to local, um, this hand will follow the, the route. So if you move this nice. down, yeah, it'll move that. But the thing is, is if you switch it, a lot of times um, the motion capture is not going to work because your, your space switches have been switched over. You know oh. what I mean? So the best thing to do is to bring it in like this. And then if you, if you want if you need to switch it to do it after, or you could do it on, um, you know, an, another way, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, okay. cause this is the default and the default shoulders are, are, um, IK shoulders. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you can switch them to um, clavicle FK if you want to have uh, a rotation instead of a translation on the shoulders. Okay. So this is more just like if you were creating your own animation, you might want to switch some of these controllers um, depending on how you want to work. But okay. if you're bringing in the motion capture, you want to pro just leave it as default. Otherwise, when you bring in the motion capture, you might get some weird um, things happening. So it's just okay. something to be aware of um, with this um, controller rig and what the defaults are. And when you bring the character in, it'll just it'll all just be at default. Sure. Yeah. So as far as layers go, um, we have the animation in here. So if you create a um, empty layer, it mm -hmm. will basically have your base animation and then it's going to create a layer on top. So what mm -hmm. I do is I select all the, I select all the controllers and then I right click on the anim layer and then I add the objects. Okay. And now all that's on this animation layer. So you see it's blank. And it's additive, right? It's not it's, override. It's additive. Yeah. Cause basically what we're going to cover is like how you can create a new pose and still have this base motion here. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I created a pose. So the easiest way is um, there's a pose utility in here. So if you mm -hmm. create a pose, like I've created this pose with this custom character um, mm -hmm. and for you, it would just be the mannequin. Um, and this pose is what I'm going to apply to this layer. Um, and then you'll see that it, it'll basically um, have this pose with this motion. And it's real easy to save the pose. So if you were to just hit save pose now, it'll create this pose in this library. Oh, so okay. You can just basically make a bunch of poses and then make a layer. And then if you have this base animation, um, you can have a bunch of different idols and different poses. So let me show you how it'll work. So if I click on that, it'll- It's like it'll, Studio Library more or less, yeah. right? If you, yeah, if I put this on top now, now you'll see that he's got um, that pose and then the animation base layer on it. Oh, uh, okay. You're seeing so is put him in the pose. Yeah, so it's got his pose, but it's got the base animation. See, and if I go down here, it's got the, the motion still. Mm -hmm. So the thing so, that is interesting about yeah. this is I created this pose with these different um, spaces. So you can see it's got, uh, it's not on default, it's on body. And mm. um, the shoulders are now FK. So depending oh. on how you save your pose and how you wanna pose your character, you can bring it in and it will kind of retain um, some of that. But that's also why you're seeing some of these pops and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. So this is part of kind of the motion capture kind of cleanup when you um, are cleaning you know, some of this stuff up. When you bring things in, you might get some pops. So you're seeing a pop in the shoulder around here. And it's you can see in the graph editor that it's probably going to be these curves. So mm -hmm. if I delete it, it it'll kind of clean it up. You know, okay. so you don't you want you don't want to delete too much because then you're going to lose some of your motion capture. But all of that motion is on the base layer. So if oh. you click over here, you see it's blank because mm -hmm. all the motion is still on the base layer. So when you're editing the motion, um, you you want to make sure you're on that base layer. And then okay. now you can kind of see as I modify this curve, it, it's gotten rid of that that pop in the shoulder. Should I remake it? Um, you can rebake it, but it, it doesn't really, you, you don't have to, when you export it out, if there's no keys on this, it's still going to retain the information. Okay. Um, so you don't need to No. Um, and then if you want to tweak this pose, um, I recommend it. it it's kind of weird. If you put the pose at the beginning, it kind of, it kind of gets a little bit confused. So I've found that if you put the, um, the, uh, pose at the end, it'll, it seems to retain the uh, animation a lot better. So I'd recommend, really? yeah, I'd okay. recommend putting it at the end instead of the beginning. Um, yeah, I found that out. Um, so all no, you really need, yeah, all you really need to do with this, um, base or this, uh, layer here is, uh, if you want to tweak the pose, um, and you don't want to change the animation, let's just say you want to, you, you just want to adjust his pose a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, you just make sure that you set a key um, on your what you what you've changed. 
And now okay. you, you know, see it's going to retain that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of just yeah. how you can work with layers. Mm -hmm. um, you could also, um, if you didn't want to do the layer process, you could do it manually by just like kind of copying and pasting um, animations. You just have to make sure you're always on that base layer, you know, and then you can um, essentially just kind of, you can copy, you can copy all of this animation and paste it. Uh, later in the timeline if you wanted oh, okay. to do that like if you wanted to just make another one manually you know like you could paste it um, later in the timeline so you you'd have the same animation over here but let's say you didn't want to do let's say you didn't want to do uh, a layer you just want to manually edit it mm -hmm. um, the old-fashioned way kind of what you could do is then you'd be editing the curves so then you're actually um uh, editing the motion data. So what I'd recommend is, um, just because like, if you look at this curve, I would set a key, like if you're, let's say we're, we're going to like make his uh, root lower, I would set a key, like the frame before, and you'll see like, now that I grab these curves, if I, if I start translating him or actually he's it's Z space. So Z is going to be his translation up. So let's say I grab, these on frame 50 and let's say we want to that's kind of weird because because the um it's z it's z up on on maya for unreal um mm -hmm. the axes are a little in in the editor it's a little weird even though it's z up the actual curve it's that's translating it up and down is the x wow so, yeah. so as you can see, like what you could do manually if you want it, and if you didn't want to do curves and let's say you just want to translate them down, but you see why I set this key here, just so it retains kind of his original motion. Cause otherwise it's going to have this big blend. See so if I get rid of it, it's going to have this drift, um, which isn't a big deal if you started at frame 50, but just for your sanity, uh, just so you know, if you're going to work this way, I like to just kind of have a, like a dead space in here and then okay. and then edit it down like this. Okay. So that's a, another way you can just manually start editing motion capture. Uh, so, you know, like if you really want, if you wanted to start animating what's in there, uh, like let's say we want to get rid of this pop, it, it's a lot more of a, a longer process because you got to, you got to deal with all these different keys in here, you know, uh, to kind of smooth things out. This is like, How do you, let, let me ask you a question. How do you make it more manageable? Because I know sometimes people like to work with the baked keys on one. Would you resample the curve and put it on fours or twos yeah. just to make it a little so bit more manageable? Like, yeah, this is kind of what I would do is I would like, let's say we want to clean up this pop. It, it occurs around frame 60, but we want to retain as much animation as we, as we can. Um, yeah. So I probably would try to keep it like let's say um i would probably try to keep it on twos or or four probably maybe fours so okay. maybe frame 56 to 60 we could try to delete it because there's a pop here and then it's a little bit of a like experimenting to see um what's going to retain the animation uh Okay. Yeah, because you don't want to lose you don't want to lose um, that motion capture feel, you know. So you got to be a little careful about how much you delete. And okay. So it, it is a very it this, you're essentially just editing motion capture at this point. You know, this is like the motion capture process of cleaning up motion capture. Um, mm -hmm. So you can go that route. Uh, the other way you could do it, which might be more um, easier is, is to do it. Well, let's see, we already kind of lost. Let's see. Well, the, let's see. Um, let me show another way. If the other way you could do it is just in the layer itself, kind of how we did it here. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't have a pop cause we move this arm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you just do it on the layer, it is a lot faster and it retains it. So if we know that this is you know going to be extended 
too much. We can, what we can also look at is leave that layer on. And then around here, you can, you can start adjusting, should be able to adjust the curve in the editor. See that? So, so now we know this pop occurs around frame 14. So I'm adjusting this curve at frame 30. See, this is frame 30, this key over here. Mm -hmm. If I adjust that one, I can kind of see if I leave my cursor here at frame 13, I can kind of see that that pop is gone by, you know, so that's a, a, another quick way of doing it. So I think layers is the easiest way to modify, but if you really want to dig in there and you really want to change the performance, you might have to go the manual route. I would gotcha. try to do the layer approach first because uh, it's faster. Um, you know, like let's say you also want to move this this pelvis instead of editing all those curves, you know, to get a little more of a natural position there. Um, see that it, it, it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But you see, there's a lot of jitter in the knees. Um, the the knees are kind of tough on the art tools because the knee twist is built into the foot controller. Okay, it's up here. So in order to kind of reduce that knee jitter, you see all this data that's in here. That's where that jitter is coming from. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. So if you just, I think if we just moved out the curve in here, it will get rid of it and see that. So it's, okay. a, it's a little bit of a mix of editing the motion and, you know, possibly working with layers. A little bit of both. I think as long as you understand the concept of where the where the information is coming from, you can kind of decide uh, like which technique you want to use to kind of clean it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with that, you basically can have a base motion, you know, like you have here, and then you can kind of create different stances and different arm poses. You know, lower center of gravity. Um, you know, he can be holding a weapon. Um, as long as you just kind of have that base motion down there and then you can work with the layers and this pose system and create multiple poses. And then you can have a whole bunch of, um, animations. You could do that for walks and runs too. kind of work the same way. Although walks and runs, you have, um, leg movement. So it might, it's probably a little more advanced to try to get, um, some of those to blend as naturally, but it would be the same process. You'd always be kind of working with that base animation and then um adjusting the uh pose and then smoothing out curves okay yeah well, that's kind of how motion capture works and you know even like you know naughty dog and stuff like that these games i've worked on it kind of works the same way you're always trying to keep this data intact um but then kind of working with an override layer and then cleaning up some of that um that motion capture data to try to keep it smooth depending on how you've changed that, you know, that pose. Mm 